of the lighthouse
in the precious name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. 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 Oh God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. We don't plan on Notice I said don't plan on being before you too long on today. But those of you who have your Bibles, I want you to turn with us to Paul's letter to Titus. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. <coughs> Titus chapter 2, we'll be looking at verses 11 through 14. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 2, 11 through 14. I don't know what it is every time I get ready to preach something happens with my voice. When you're there, will you say amen? amen? Let us stand in honor and reverence for the word of God. Beginning at verse number 11 of the second chapter of Titus. It says, for the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, yes. zealous of good works. Yeah. We thank God for the blessing that he gives to the readers, the hearers, and the believers of his holy word. You may be seated. <clears throat> Precious Father, we come in the name that is above every name. Yes. The name that when it is mentioned, every knee shall bow and every tongue should confess that he is Lord to your glory. Yeah. Father God, I come asking right now for a fresh anointing of your spirit to fall upon this vessel of clay. And I pray that same anointing to fall upon each and every person that is under the sound of my voice. Yeah, Lord, I'm asking that you will enable me to preach your word with holy boldness yes. and your God-given authority. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm asking, Father God, that you let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart mm -hmm. be acceptable in your sight. You are my Lord. You are my strength. You yes. are my rock. You are my Redeemer. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ that I pray. And let all of God's people say, Amen. 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 And from that portion of Scripture, we just want to call your attention to verse number 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Mm -hmm. And as outlined in our order of service, our sermon title is, We Need God's Grace. Yes. We need God's Grace. Yes. When you look at this portion of scripture in Paul's letter to his son in the ministry, yeah. Titus, well. we find that 
the center of Paul's attention is on the amazing grace of God. And I thank Brother J.D. and the male chorus for singing that song because it came right in tune with our message for today. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us something, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, yes. that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present age. We are looking for the blessed hope Amen. and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the one who gave himself for us. Yeah. That we that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself yeah. a peculiar people. Yeah. Zealous of good works. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And I would even go even farther to say that if we want a definition of our duties as Christians, if we want the fulfillment of God's will in our lives as Christians, it can be found in these verses of Scripture. What I'm saying is that God wants the best for us. God's grace, God's unmerited favor has appeared, has been made available to all men. That tells me that there, there, there was a need for the grace of God in the lives of all men. Jews and Gentiles, males and females, those who were slaves, those who were free, all men. There was a need for the grace of God and there is still a need for the grace of God in the lives of those who are black, those who are white, those who are red, those who are brown, those who are yellow, or even if there's anybody who's technicolor. We all have a need. Hallelujah. For the grace of God. Because we all have one thing in common and that is that we are sinners in need of a savior we have all missed the mark we have all missed the high standard that, that God has set for us in our lives and, and I'm talking about holiness so you don't hear too much about holiness today, but God says, be ye holy as he is holy. But we all have lived our lives in sin. We have all lived in foolishness and disobedience, being deceived and tempted by the enemies of our souls. I'm talking about the devil to sin. It was sin that caused the first man, Adam, to fall. Well, yeah. It was sin that caused the first woman, Eve, to fall victim. And, and, and that propensity and that tendency, that inclination to sin has been passed on all men. Yes. Well, well. Preach, preach. Causing us to be consumed by the things that God doesn't approve of in our lives. Living in rebellion against God. Living with hate and anger and envy and jealousy toward one another. So y'all ain't hearing me. In other words, we have all seen and come short of the glory of God. That's why we need the grace of God. Yes, 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 yes. 
There was a need for the grace of God in our lives because we were not sufficient in and of ourselves to, to fight and to win the war against the things that the enemy uses to entice us. That the enemy uses to capture us and ensnare us and bind us. Man needed to be rescued. And the only thing that could rescue and save him from eternal damnation in the fires of hell was the grace of God. It's appeared to all men. But let me say this. The all men of verse number 11 does not mean that all men will be saved. All men have the opportunity to be saved. But all men will not be saved because all men will not receive God's grace. As a matter of fact, when you look at the text in the context of verses 1 through 10, God's grace saves all types of people. People in every race and in every station and situation of life. It, it includes men and, and women. It, it, it includes young folks like the young folks in our church today. It, 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 it includes old folks like me and Jews and Gentiles. So what I'm trying to say is there's no type or class of people that God's grace has not been made available to. Hallelujah! We're all included. Oh, that's good news. See, there's a common grace that Scripture speaks about and a general call that goes out to everybody. And then there is an effectual call, an effectual grace at the moment of salvation for the redeemed people of God. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about those who accept the call by faith. Those called according to God's own purpose and God's grace which was given to us in Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world. Saving grace. Saving grace is, is, is reserved for those who respond in faith. And repentance. Yes. As verse number 12 talks about those who have turned from sin unto salvation. Those who are trusting Jesus Christ as their Savior. Trusting him as the only way of salvation. For they understand that there is no other name. There is no other way of salvation than by faith in the shed blood and the finished work of Jesus. Those who are not relying on how good they think they are, how good they think that they have been, or what they can do to save themselves. They, they, they are relying on what God has done through Jesus Christ by his faith, by his grace. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Or somebody ought to say, yeah. Hallelujah. There was a need. There was a need for the grace of God. I don't know about you, but I needed to be rescued. Because I couldn't lift myself up out of the muck and the miry clay of sin. I, I really didn't have the will. I really didn't have the strength to do it. It took the power of God's grace. Hallelujah. It took God's righteousness. Hallelujah. It took a righteousness that was greater than my own righteousness. My own self-righteousness to be able to act on my own behalf. I had to cry out to God one day. Lord, save my sin sick soul. Lord, I believe that help my own. If it was not for the grace of God, I would still be lost. 
in my sin. If it was not for the grace of God, I would still be lost in hopelessness. If it was not for the grace of God, I would still be in my helplessness and on my way to hell to spend out my eternity in the lake of fire. Hallelujah. For grace in my life. And I thank God for his grace in my life. I thank God for his grace in the lives of all men and that grace the Bible says has appeared to all men in the person of Jesus Christ. Well y'all ain't hearing me. Salvation is all of God. Salvation is by God. Salvation is for God. Salvation is through God. Salvation is all of God, all by himself. It's God's salvation. It's God's election. It's God's redemption. It's God's reconciliation. It's God's propitiation. And that's what makes us God's possession. Oh, that's good preaching. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Our lives are not our own. We've been bought with a price. And the price is the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can somebody say thank God for his grace? It's all about what God has done. It's God's salvation. His salvation causes us to do good works. It's the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost that empowers us to do his will, to live our lives for him and him alone. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Well, well. When verse 11 says, God's grace appeared. It's referring to God's grace yeah. in the person of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the grace of God. That grace that moved throughout the book of the Acts as his gospel was preached to all men. From Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth as he had commissioned those apostles to do. And it's the same process that is still going on today. No, 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 you don't hear about it on the news, but I'm here to tell you that people are being saved each and every day. People are turning to Jesus and declaring the mighty works of God, but the antichrist factions of the world would have you believe that everybody's turning to other religions. See, what I'm trying to say is that people hate Jesus People hate Christianity because people deny the truth and the truth is in Jesus. And when you know the truth, hallelujah, when you know Jesus, you'll be made free. Who Jesus sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many people in this world and in this great nation of the United States of America that hate Jesus. They would crucify him all over again if they could. They took Bible reading. They took prayer out of our children's schools because they hate Jesus. They hate God. And Jesus is God. And he's the only way of salvation. There are people in this world and in this nation who hate Jesus and, and if, if, if they had their way, every church in this nation and in the world that has its doors open for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ would be closed. But I just dropped by on my way to glory to tell them today that there's still a need for the grace of God, of God's grace. 
Hallelujah. It's God's grace. God's grace is able to save even those who hate the name of Jesus. How do you know that preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. There's a man who wrote this epistle. His name is Paul. And we know his testimony. How this man, whose Jewish name was Saul, hated the church and did all that was in his power that he could to destroy the church. His name was changed from Saul to Paul. It was changed after he had an encounter with the grace of God. Hey, his life was changed. One day while he was traveling down the road to Damascus, in order to persecute and put an end to the church. But he met the grace of God. I'm here to tell you today that the life-changing power of the grace of God, that's what it's all about. And it has appeared in the person of Jesus Christ. And he brings salvation to every man. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad, so glad that he can change your life. Hallelujah. There's no way that you can be changed on your own. You need to have an encounter with Jesus. That's why he died. Oh, yes, he did. He died. They tell me that he took an old rugged cross and he marched up Calvary's mountain carrying that old rugged cross. They tell me that he stumbled a couple times carrying that cross, but he made it to the top of Mount Calvary's hill. They put nails in his hands, nails in his feet. They lifted him high. They stretched him wide. He died. Oh, yes, he did. He died. But early, 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 he got up with all power. That's what the grace of God is all about. Yes, sir. It has appeared yes, to all men. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Teaching us yes. that denying ungodliness yes. and worldly lust yes. that we should live soberly yes. and righteously yes. and godly yes. Yes. in this present age. Yes. God saved us. To make a difference yes. in this world. Yes, he did. God saved us yes, to make a difference yes. in the lives of our children. Yes. Yes. Train them up yes. in the way that they should go. Yes. And when they are old, they will not depart. Yes. I'm a living witness. Yes. Oh. To the grace of God. Raised in the church. Made to go to church. I don't care if you was out all night Saturday night when Sunday came. You getting up. You going to church. I went to the military. I wrote a letter back home. There's a church down the street from me and I don't go. I live my life serving the devil. But one day, hallelujah. I met up with the grace of God. The grace of God met me at the crossroads of life and hell. That was the greatest intercession that ever happened in the world. He intercepted me on my way to hell and has now given me a home in glory. We need the grace yeah. of God. Yeah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your yes. word. We thank you, Lord God, for all that thank you, Lord. our eyes
eyes have seen and our hearts have felt, our ears have heard. As we watched our young people carry this service today in honor and glory and praise to your name. And Lord God, we just continue to lift them up to you. Continue, Lord God, to bless them with the blessings that you know that they each stand in need of and only you can provide. We thank you, Lord God, for this experience on today. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. As we stand and give the invitation, the grace of God is here because the grace of God has appeared to all men. It's available to everyone. It's available to you.